This game is too easy. What do you mean? We can shoot lasers from our hands and summon friends to help us. Well, those are choices that you can make, yes, but they are your choices. Well, then give me another choice. How about a talisman that makes you take more damage? Uh, excuse me? Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, welcome one and all to another roundup of everyone's favorite build companion piece, the accessory to the stars, by which I mean the accessory to everyone, because realistically we are all made of recycled stardust anyways, your talismans. Those little trinkets that we, uh, I guess, carry in our pocket? I don't know what we really do with them. They give you passive benefits through every stage of your journey through Elden Ring, and some of them can be more useful than others, while some are just plain worth knowing about even if you would never effort touch them yourselves. Without further ado then, here are 8 more talismans you don't want to miss in Elden Ring. First up, one of our more interesting ones just in the game, the Blue Dancer Charm Talisman. This one raises your attack power the lower that your equipment load is. However, it does not go on percentages, but the literal equip load number, so your endurance doesn't affect it at all. The way that the scales is also really weird and deep, but the simplest explanation is at around 8 equip load or lower, you will be soft cap at around 15% physical damage boost, slowly depreciating down to 0% effectiveness at 30 equip load and upwards and fluctuating a little bit depending on the weapon that it is applied to. So if you want to use this talisman, you will have to be under 30 equip load for it to have any effect, and you'll have to be at 8 for it to be at its maximum effect. But that said, a 15%-ish all-round damage boost is nothing to scoff at if you are already playing at 8 weight load anyways. To acquire it for yourself, you'll need to head to the High Road Cave in Limgrave, follow the path through here until you reach the big open room. Drop to the middle section and walk along the floating pillar and through the the waterfall to find a cave leading to a boss fog wall. Defeat the boss inside and receive this talisman for yourself. Secondly, we have the Kindred of Rot's Exultation Talisman. This one raises your attack power by 20% for 20 seconds every time a poison or rot status happens in your vicinity, including upon yourself. This one is simply unmatched in a build where you focus around either of these two statuses as you get this buff active just constantly. 20% is quite a lot of damage and 20 seconds is quite a long time to get another poison or rot applied. To get this one for yourself, head to the Seethwater Cave up at the base of Mount Gelmir, which requires a stone sword key to access, and then traverse through to the boss at the end, who upon death will drop this talisman for you. Third today, then, is the Moon of Noxtella. This talisman raises your memory slots by two, and thus is great for the toolkit of any magic user. That said, if you need more than six spell slots to get the job done, you are probably doing something a little crazy anyways, but hey, knowing that you have the ability to get two more if you should want to run all of the spells in the game that cost multiple slots is sort of pretty cool. To acquire this for yourself, first reach Noxtella, the Eternal City, which can be done through the Rani quest line. If you need help with that, check out our Dark Moon Greatsword video link down below. From the Noxella Eternal City site of Grace, head up these stairs to the west, forwards past the electric blobs, left and then take a right at the bridge. Watch out for the rolling metal ball, but get around it, past it, and then head up that main staircase. At the top, head into the building and then out on your left to another staircase. Enter the building at the top and defeat the enemies inside, then within the large throne in the back is a chest holding this talisman for you. Fourth up will be the Lightning Scorpion Charm, the lightning equivalent of the charms that make you take more damage in exchange for an elemental boost. This one increasing your lightning damage by around 12.5% in exchange for some loss of damage negation. Essentially, if you are using lightning damage as a main source of offense, this is probably worth picking up and considering putting in your build. If you want to do so, head to the Windham Catacombs and progress through the area, making sure to avoid the arrows that I seem to be great at walking into myself, and then eventually you will reach a stone sword key door along the path. Open this, and over in the back of that room you'll find this talisman waiting to be picked up. Fifthly, then, moving to our ranged friends, we have the Arrow's Sting Talisman, quite simply boosting your damage with arrows and bolts by around 10% while equipped. It is a very simple concept and very easy to know if you'd make use of it, so if you'd like it for yourself, head to the impassable Great Bridge site of Grace and Caled, and then right beside you is a wooden tower. Climb up the two ladders that are on this tower, and in the back right corner at the top is a chest, inside of which you will find this talisman. Sixth today is the matching companion to that last one, the Arrow's Reach Talisman. 
This one increases the effective range of your shots with bolts and arrows, which essentially is just a flat damage increase past a certain range as you will most often be playing these weapons at range. This means an enemy that you hit about 30 feet away will probably act more like they were hit around 20 feet away, the damage escalating to match. Weirdly enough, the scaling on this is strong enough that it actually pretty much matches the arrow's sting unless you are right up next to your target. The damage bonus from it is pretty good, so that's sort of cool. To grab this one, head to the gate front site of Grace way back near the beginning of Limgrave, then head up the hill past the troll and take a left onto the hill itself. Stay on the left side of the cliff line until you reach the tower above the gate front, well, the gate. Enter through here, defeat the guards, and open the chest to get your own copy of this talisman. Seventh then is the Phlox Canvas Talisman. This one raises your incantation damage by around 8%, very simply. And as much as this is, of course, an amazing talisman for anyone who focuses incantations as their main source of damage output. To acquire this one for yourself is a bit of a task, though. The way that you get it is by killing an NPC, but only after doing a quest line, or at least part of a quest line. The specific quest line of note belongs to Millicent, so I'll tell you the general objectives and locations without giving away too much for anyone who wants to see the whole thing for themselves. You have to kill a boss on the eastern side of the Aeonia Swamp, who drops an item. Bring this item to Gary's shack outside of the town of Celia. After the conversation here, head to the Church of the Play at the top of the hill and talk to the woman inside. After this, head back to Gary's shack, and then progress to the Shaded Castle in the Altus Plateau. Get inside, follow the wall on the left until you reach a big ladder. Climb up here and then follow the path on the left here all the way until you reach a building at the end behind a clean wrought knight. Inside of there is a chest containing the Valkyrie's prosthesis. Find Millicent at the Air Tree Gazing Hill, Sight of Grace, and then exhaust her dialogue there. Then go and defeat the boss at the top of Windmill Village in the northeast of the Altus Plateau. Talk to her at the Grace that spawns after that, and then move on to the Howling Tree Mega Dungeon. From the Drainage Channel, Sight of Grace, turn back and head up the ladder. From here, climb up until you reach this branch, jump from here to the other side, and a boss will spawn in the pool. Defeat the boss and return to the Sight of Grace, and then come back to the pool again, and you will find dual signs on the floor. One to go against Millicent, and one to help Millicent. After this, the questline is complete. With that done, now you have to head back to Gary's shack from the very start of the questline, and you can kill Gary, who is there, and this is when he will drop the flock canvas talisman. Technically, you can kill him any time after Millicent moves on to Air Tree Gazing Hill and onwards, and the talisman will be in his drop pool then, but that's not the natural ending of his story, so I'm, I'm not talking about that normally. And then finally, the Data Cars Woe Talisman. This one, uh, well, it doubles your damage taken, just straight up. Nothing hidden in that thing. You might be thinking, well, there has to be some benefit to that, right? There has to be some way of making that good, right? Uh, well, uh, that's the thing. There isn't even a weapon or spell in the game, at least as far as I'm personally aware, that benefits from you taking more damage. There are some that react to you being hit, but not to taking more damage within the same number of hits. So as far as I can tell, this is entirely 100% an optional hard mode slider for some reason, lose a talisman slot and take twice as much damage. How great is that? I, I don't know, it depends on what your goals are. To get it for yourself, you'll need to do another quest line, this one for Rhea in the Volcano Manor. Once you reach the manor itself, find Rhea in the drawing room along with the others. After talking to her, do the first assassination mission for Volcano Manor, and then return and you will find her across the hall in another room in a different form that I won't spoil here. After talking to her, do the second assassination quest and then return to talk to her again. Then go into the room that is to the right of Rhea's and open the illusion wall in the back right corner. Pass through here and you'll find a site of grace. Continue from this along the path and you'll reach the Temple of Aigle, inside of which is a boss fight. Defeat the boss and receive the Serpent's Amnion item in the back. Then return to Volcano Manor proper and give this to Rhea. After this, head back to the Temple of Aigle once again, then go up the elevator by the side of Grace to the balcony, jump off the backside and continue through until you reach an elevator there. Bring it down to unlock the shortcut and of course use it to go back up to drop off of this shortcut right before the top. From here, go at the window and across the short gap in the rocks to find Rhea in her new location. From here, you have three choices. All three of the choices, however, will lead to Rhea disappearing from the game and you receiving this talisman. And so there you have it. Eight more interesting and special talismans in Elden Ring and where exactly you can find them. Are any of these going to wind up in your frequent use pile or are you just gonna put Data Car's Woe over in the corner to gather dust while you cry? Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. 
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.